All right, good morning, all you uh, techies out there. We're going to do uh, 2D rocket design using Rhino. And so we're going to do water bottle rockets. And for that, we're going to get Rhinoceros 4.0 open. And what we want to do is small objects. We're going to do inches. Yeah, sorry, Europe. We're not doing it as metric this time. But anyway, all right, you could do it in metric if you're not in my class. Okay, typically when Rhino opens, it opens and asks you what template file to use. We're going to do small objects is important because it's for any object that's the size of a truck or smaller. And our two liter bottles are going to be 12 inches high by four inches wide. So we're going to do small objects inches. I'm going to click open. Once you get it open, we're just going to do a two dimensional design, not a 3D design. And we're going to do it top down. So I want you to just double click the top. Once you double click it, you get the full screen. The other thing I'm going to do is I want to line these X and Y coordinate lines uh, to the lower left hand part of my screen. So I'm going to use my right click on my mouse. And then when I'm holding it down, I can then move the, the canvas basically. So what I want to do is I want to place an image of a two liter bottle that I can trace around. So you're going to want to find an image. Once you find it and save it, you're going to right click on top, choose background bitmap and place. Okay, you got to find a picture of a two liter bottle. So I will use this Diet Dr. Pepper bottle. I'll click open. And at this point, you're like, wait a minute, I thought I was opening a picture. Why, why is this going on here? Well, it just wants to know how big you want that picture. So we're going to start at one corner and then I move my mouse down. So I did a click to get that corner and I'm going to move it down here and click again. <laughs> Now at this point, this two liter bottle in this image, it's not doesn't take up the whole image. So I wasn't able to place this and make it exactly the size of 12 by four. And that's okay, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the whole thing. And then once we draw it, we're gonna enlarge it and to try to get it the right size. Now, one of the things I wanna show you in Rhino is that you can actually compose your curves using two different tools. So the two I wanna focus on are the polyline tool and the control point curve. Okay, so I'm going to click on here, polyline, I'm going to get that. And then I want to zoom in on the top of the cap. So I'm going to zoom in here. And the reason why I'm going to do that is that there are straight lines. Now, I notice when I zoom in, I kind of lose the top. So I want to get that back. So I'm just going to right click, hold and drag. And now what I can do is I can draw this. Now, one of the things too, you want to look down at the bottom. And I want to take snap off. If I don't, if I leave snap on, notice the points can only go on any of these grid lines. So I'm going to uncheck that. But I will leave O snap on, stands for object snap, and I'm going to leave end on. So I'm going to click on here, and everywhere I want straight lines, I go through and I click it. And the nice thing about this is that uh, on this bottle, it's much easier to draw some straight lines than it is to do control point curves. And at this point, everything else is a curved line. So you see my mouse is like, okay, where, where are we going to go here? So I'm done drawing, so I'm just going to hit enter. By the way, um, look up here at this command line window. It gives you hints. Okay, so there's my first part of my polyline. So now what I want to do is attach the curve line and draw around the bottom. So I need a control point curve. Let me remind you, what I had you do is make sure O snap is bold and end is checked. And watch what happens. As my cursor gets close to the end of the other line, it tells me end. And if I click, it's going to start right where the other line left off. And that's important. The other thing that's important for you guys to know is that when you're drawing a control point curve, I'll give you a demonstration. Um, those control points are pretty close together. If you want to see the control points and edit them, you can actually click a line segment and click over at this tool, which is Edit Points. And if you left click, notice the little highlighted mouse down below. We have uh, black uh, where it says Edit Points On and Edit Points Off. Those two little things are indicating a left click puts, puts the points on it and a right click takes them off. So I'm going to left click. And I've got these little points here. We can zoom in and we can see how these work. Now, what, watch what happens as I move these control points. 
So these actually allow you to edit the line. Now I'm going to undo that. So I'm going to do a control Z until I'm back to where we're at. I just wanted to show you control points. And I'm going to zoom out again. And I'm going to line it up. Actually, I might zoom in a little bit. And I just want to show you the nature of control points. Right here, if I put one control point here, one here, look what happens to my line. If your control points are too far apart from each other, that line actually will not connect directly to the control points. In fact, if you want a circle, you get four control points. See how that works? So the closer your control points are to each other, the, the closer your lines are going to be to the control points. When you're done, you have a circle there. See that? I don't want a circle. I just want to draw around here. But I wanted to illustrate the importance of the placement of your control points. This is an art form, and it, it just takes practice. I have discovered on this particular two-liter bottle and my other demonstrations that it's better for me to err on the side of the inside of the bottle than the outside. When I grow this to actual size, I found that it actually is going to be outside the regular measurements of a two-liter bottle. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is when I'm doing straight lines, I don't need to put my points so close together because I'm just keep I'm still moving straight along this plane. And as I said, I'm staying kind of on the inside of this two-liter bottle. And now that I got closer curves here, I want to zoom in a little bit. You'll notice I'm putting my control points a little closer together. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to silently uh, continue making this line, and I'm going to like speed it up on the video, so you don't have to watch me do this whole thing. But Okay, one of the things you'll notice is I got right to the end here, and it told me end, and I'm done. So I'm just going to hit enter. Now, one of the things I notice a lot of students tend to do is they end up making their bottle out of a lot of different lines. So I'm going to get the selection tool. I'm going to click on one line segment, and you can see where it's highlighted. I'm going to click another line segment. Basically, my bottle is drawn out of three different line segments. So what I'm going to do is I want to hide my picture so I can focus on the lines. Now I'm going to hide it because I might use it later if I have to redo anything. So on this case, I'm going to go back to that background bitmap. So you right click on top, go down to background bitmap, and here I'm going to choose hide. So now that's hidden. So I deselect, I can show you, now you can focus on the model. See how there's one line segment, there's a second one, and a third one. Um, in order for this to be easier to work with, we want to combine all three of these into one. Okay. So, And the other thing I want to point out is sometimes you go to click a line and it says selection menu. And you're like, what? What that is, is it just doesn't know which line you intended to select. So you have to actually click one of these here. And then I can click it. So what I want to do is I'm going to hold down uh, shift and I'm going to select all my lines. And then I'm going to try to join them with the puzzle piece. And I click join. And that's all one line. Do you see that? I click on any part here. It's all one closed curve. Right here it says three curves joined into one closed curve. However, some of you oops, might have forgotten to have O-snap on. And let me show you why that's important. I just want to show you the points here. So let's say O-snap is not on. I'm going to take it off. Oh, There we go. Let's say it's not on, and you draw your points, and you don't realize it's not on, and you draw it, and you think you got it. And you look at this line here, and you zoom out, and you might not see that they don't connect. But if you zoom in really close, see that? There's a little gap between those two. So 
watch what happens when I try to join all these curves. Click here, I held shift, click there, click there. I click this puzzle piece and it says, well, this one actually worked. So, hey, we're lucky. Sometimes it doesn't join. And if it doesn't, what you want to do is you want to just do the edit points. And when you have the edit points, if you see they're not touching, you just click the O snap and end. And then you can take a point, drag it out, drag it till it says end, let go. There. And now I right click on here and I can now select all my lines again. Quickest way, by the way, it would be to just drag a whole square around everything and then click the puzzle pieces. Now it's joined into one closed curve. Okay, first step, drawing the bottle. Next step is to scale it. Our two liter bottles are 12 inches high by four inches wide. So we wanna get basically this bottle to be 12 inches high. But we're not sure how wide it is. We're not sure if we've drawn it correctly or not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a frame that's a reference point. So we're going to create a rectangle that's 12 inches high and 4 inches wide. In order to do that, we can click on the menu that says rectangle. Or in command, you can just type rectangle. Okay. When you, when you want a command, you start typing. It'll tell you what commands are available. So we want rectangle. And it says first corner. We're gonna, that's going to be the lower left-hand corner. Notice it says first corner. I have to hit a corner. I'm going to type 0 and hit enter. Notice where the point is right now. The point is right where the red and green lines or the X and Y axis meet. The next corner or length is actually going to be the width on top view. So I type 4 and I finally type 12. And now I have a rectangle that's exactly 12 inches by 4 inches. So now I want this bottle to be the same height and width. So what I'm going to do is line it up bottom left on that rectangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale or large or sh enlarge or shrink my bottle. In order to scale that, it's scale 2D, and I can just type scale and then select 2D there. Or if I'm more graphically minded, I can hover over this cube down here, and I can right-click, which is scale 2D. It doesn't matter which one you do. The other thing is um, if your bottle is already selected, then you get to skip a step. Let me show you what I mean. I'm not going to select every anything. It's all deselected. And I type scale, 2D, hit enter. First thing it asks me is what objects do we want to scale? Well, that's our bottle and our bottle only. So I'm going to select it. Now, if I had already had it selected, I wouldn't have to select the object. And now I can just press enter. So now it says origin point. Where do you want to start enlarging it? I like to use the corner of the rectangle. And you click there, and now it says scale factor or first reference point. I'm going to go to the top of the bottle. Notice how with O snap, it jumps right to it. I'm going to click and hold the mouse down and drag it up. And as you notice, exactly what I thought was going to happen, which is why I tried to draw it on the inside, is that when I scale it to 12 inches high, it's actually wider than 4 inches. In this particular assignment, I want you guys to have a tolerance of one quarter of an inch. What that means is you can get it up to a quarter of an inch too wide or too tall, and I'm okay with that. Okay. 